Okay, so let's get the ball rolling. I can get going. So welcome everyone. Thank you for being here. It's wonderful to see most of your faces unveiled. Some, some not, but yeah. So be at ease. If you like to have your mask still, you're welcome to. Otherwise, we are grateful that we don't need it anymore by law. <laughs> so yeah, it's just wonderful for us to be together. We haven't. Um, yeah, it feels like it's been a while. Um, are you guys enjoying the Genesis series thus far? Um, uh, just to say, if you haven't seen the notice, but life groups are going to be closing for um, the holiday period. Um, I'm sure most of you have seen that. But I really do want to encourage you to also keep encouraging your groups to really get into Genesis. Don't let these three weeks sort of just rush past now without us actually... Yeah, receiving the fullness of those topics that's going to be covered. It's, it really is so wonderful. So, shall I pray? And then, Lord, we just thank you for the wonderful privilege of being in your presence, the wonderful privilege of being taught by you, instructed by you, through your servants, Lord, but mainly through your spirit that is within each one of us. And so, we thank you once again for this evening, for the opportunity to hear you addressing us, Lord, each one of us, even as Nick would be the messenger, but you are the one from whom the message comes. And so I do pray that all of our hearts would be open wide to hear from you, receive, Lord. I think just even of our prayer meeting where we waited on you, and I'm sure you are speaking, Lord. Many things still to actually be unpacked in each one of us and then maybe brought even to the bigger um, group, Lord. But we we are attentive, Lord. We, we do want to um, be a people that don't just make our requests known, but we actually want to interact with you and, and hear you speaking to us and then be a people that is open and responsive. And so we we are keen, Lord. We, we incline our ears to you and we um, we want to be intentional. I think of um, Tula and a bunch of guys that are in Portugal now and the things that you're speaking into their lives and into that whole group of people. And we want to be a part of that, Lord. And so we remember them. I think what you've done already in this um, church, in this year, it just seems like so much has been happening, so many trips and so many significant moments. And so, Lord, we expectant of another significant moment where we want to reach out to you and touch the end of your garment and feel power actually come into us as we receive from you. So we give this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Nick. Am I using the hand handhelds? Am I using this, guys? So, so wonderful to see you all, your happy faces, my word, one or two masks, but um, isn't it wonderful? Are you breathing? Are you alive out here? Is it mine? Uh, just amazing feedback from Portugal. Um, you know, I think uh, Chris Vinant, um, he's got an incredible gift of catalyzing and opening doors and this Portugal thing is, is, is very good, and we're just getting feedback from Matt and uh, Tr uh, Kristen Larson, who are there, so we're on a Genesis Collective Leadership Group, so we're getting a lot of photographs of them praying tonight, and some of them just falling asleep in the prayer meeting like this, and, um, but, but it's, it's a really been a really good time, small, compact, tight, I think it's going to get ignited, poof, and, and go, you know, and so, you know, one of Chris's gifts is the ability to just put these things together around the world and um, really want to uh, encourage you to participate and just think around it. But um, amazing gifts, uh, all the guys ministering, we've got about six guys there, five guys there, so it's, it's a really good time and I'm not going to steal tools this thunder or the guys that come back, but it's, it's been a, a, a good time and probably the guys that go there will have a sense that they can, they can take on the world. They can take the gospel anywhere. Portugal's Europe, it's kind of, it's expensive, but they're owning it. And so I bring a good report from Portugal. Amen. Um, where's Lynette? Gone. There you are, Lynette. Lynette, please stand. I thought you were bunking, Lynette. But uh, it's, it's Lynette's last week as a principal of Little Arts. What, 18 years, Lynette? 20 years, principal 18 years, and you know, Lynette, you, you've been an amazing principal. You're a, you're, an, you're a wonderful, wonderful servant of Jesus. 
And um, just working with you, there hasn't been a single issue. There's never been a problem. And you've done your job incredibly well. And I know there's a farewell, and, but I want to honor you in front of these leaders here. We will honor you in front of the church, but you really are a champion. And um, <clears throat> I know Vaughneen started the school, and you were in her, in her wing. And um, you took it, and you've just been exceptional. And um, I want to recognize you and honor you and thank you for the amazing work that you've done at that school. It's insane that you're leaving, but there's another. <laughs> but, but thank you for, your, for just what you've done. Thank you for your, bringing your gift. Thank you for looking after children and children and children and another batch and another batch and the moms and dads and another batch for all these 20 years. I want to appreciate you and commend you, Lynette, and Ricky, who's labored with you, walked with you, who's also a champion. I don't know where he is, but um, he's outside watching. So bless you, Lynette. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> so I'm very aware this is quite a, uh, an important meeting, certainly for me. I don't know why it has been for 23 years. The deacons meeting is... The elders meeting, I do easily. The deacons meeting, I like, ah, oh, Lord, help, you know. And um, it's always been a weighty meeting for some reason. It's probably what's, what's the, one of the meetings that's really, I want to say driven this church, but, but through this team, this is the, this is the, the people that, that do the heavy lifting. You are the guys that do the carry. Um, probably most of the finances comes through you the leadership, the faithfulness, the pillars in the church, and it's an important one, you know, and so I do take it seriously, sometimes too seriously, and, um, but, but thank you for your leadership, thank you for your stickability, thank you for your faithfulness. I was, I was saying to Chris, you know, it was easy to lead Glenridge when it was all like happening, when everyone is young and everyone is cool, and we all had babies and all the babies were in front, now we've only got Sam squeaking. But, um, and there was such a momentum. Every, everything was new. Everything was fresh. Now some of us have been leading life groups for 20, 30 years. We've been in prayer meetings for 20, 30, 40 years. I said, it's a different dynamic. You know, he's leading a young church again. You know, he's in America leading all these youngsters. It's crazy, you know. But to have a church like this, faithful through the years, as I scan over your gray heads, George will be 80 on Friday. George, 80 on Friday. Yo, George, are we all invited or just some of us? Oh, welcome. welcome. <laughs> um, you know, to, to, to have, to, to walk with people, not just for the cool 10 years, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. It's quite a thing. And so I want to thank you for that, as you know, grateful. It's a beautiful church. I'm aware that Genesis uh, time, the Genesis Collective time, was strong and there was a lot of things thrown. And one of the things I don't want to do is drive. I just, I don't want to be a driver. I want to be a spirit-led leader. Uh, I, I was watching when he went to Lesotho, the guys smacking those poor cattle across the road from the back, da, da. And I think, oh no, Lord, please. I, 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 want, to, I want to be like a Moses or a Jesus. That's biblical leadership that says that, that, that we go, you know, and people come. And that's quite difficult because sometimes you feel, you know, you need to herd, you need to push, and I don't want to do that. But I want to preach Christ that there's a fire in our hearts, and if there's a fire in our hearts, we'll do anything, amen? And so I'm aware of the fact that we've been given some strong words during the Genesis time, and we, you know, this and this and nations, and, and this, even though it was quite, God smiles upon us. What else was there? Marriage. What else did we have? Um, resilience. What else did we preach about? <laughs> Holy Spirit. So it was interesting, but, and tonight I'm taking a little bit of a risk, with you in preaching about self-awareness. It's not, I, I've got it in my mind and I've got something on these notes, but I want to try and talk to you about this, this thought of self-awareness, which is um, an interesting one. And I haven't heard, I don't think I've heard one preach on it. I don't know if I have. I may have. I try to hear some on, on YouTube and um, they didn't quite hit the, the mark for me, but I'm going to have a go. Is that okay? Um, maybe, hopefully be refreshing. Hopefully it'll help you. Hopefully, hopefully, you know, sometimes I need things to help me go forward, even though I've been doing this for many, many years. And so let me just look at my notes. 
Um, I want to talk about self-awareness. It's a lot of things it isn't, and the power to change, and why I believe self-awareness is important, okay? So the context is Christ-like leadership. So we can talk about aware, uh, self-awareness and hive off into heavily humanistic or therapeutic or self-thing. And I'm not doing that. I'm talking about self-awareness with Jesus in front of me. Because we, if we take Jesus out, then we're a little bit in the soup, okay? It's not secular, what I'm talking about. It's not humanistic, Okay. I believe in terms of self-awareness generally, red point is at a good place. Can I repeat that? So my message is not directed at anybody in this room. <laughs> I'm not like giving you a message. I think red point generally, we, are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we carry a good sense of being aware of ourselves. And you'll, I'll try and explain why that's important. Um, there are some places, and I've been to some churches, and I think, there's a culture here that if they could see it from the outside, I think, oh, that's not so cool. It's not so cool. But I just, I, I want to say it up front, I think Red Point's got a good sense of who you are. So I'm not saying of who we are, that's, just, that's one thing, but of who you are as individuals. There's no X I'm grinding. I'm trying to give us some tools and give me some tools and cut you some tools. <laughs> to help us to go forward in life and do this thing called ministry because it's not easy. Ministry, brothers and sisters, long-term leadership is one of the most difficult things because a lot of my peers, a lot of my mates from my long history, gone. Not in leadership, not in church, just dialed out. It's too hard, as they say in Aussie. Self-awareness, this is under my introduction, is the ability to see ourselves clearly. And I, can, I, can, I can see who I am, okay? To understand who we are and how others see us. Okay, so it's the ability to see ourselves clearly. I understand who I am and I understand how others would perceive me. So you're saying, Nick, you've got to worry about what people think of you. No, I'm not saying that. But every one of us will we'll perceive and see each other. And how do I fit into the world? How does my ministry fit into the world? How does my gifting fit into the world? How does my white Caucasian, Mauritian, French, South Africanisms with all its complexities, and how do I fit in? Self-awareness can be your, a lack of self-awareness can be an enemy, or a good, healthy sense of self-awareness can be a blessing. Secular research shows that people who are self-aware and remember, there's different kinds of self-aware. Secular research. So I'm, I'm going to quote quite a bit of secular stuff, not Christian stuff, okay? Shows so that people who are self-aware are more secure. They're more effective. They're better leaders. They have better relationships. You can have my notes if you want. They get promoted quicker in higher paying jobs. <laughs> they're more accepting. They're more at peace with themselves. They're more accepting of themselves. They're more at peace with themselves. They're more creative. They're better communicators. They're more confident. They don't lie as much as other people. They don't cheat and they steal less. <laughs> We're on the right track. You know, I mean, these are Christian principles. I'm not talking about self analysis, I'm not talking about excessive um, introspection. I'm talking about self analysis. Awareness. So let's look at Proverbs 14, verse 8. If you're taking notes, which I, if you're not, I'm glad you are. Um, Proverbs 14, verse 8. Opening scripture. I've got quite a few scriptures. It says, the wisdom of the prudent is to give thought to their ways. The wisdom of the prudent, and I don't have time to, and I love looking at each word, which I do a little bit, um, is to give thought to your ways. What does it mean to give thought to your ways? Sometimes you think, Gee, we just had this encounter, I just was at church, or I, I, and I want to just give thought to what happened there. Give thought to that. We, we went out for dinner with these people, we had, da, 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 or we went to a ministry trip, and actually a few things happened. And you know, you know, Kati, you know, you can't believe it. No, no give thought to your ways. So, so the Lord expects us, but the folly of fools is deception. You see, 
Part of our struggle is I don't know what I don't know. I, I don't know what I don't know. Part of it is I could be, I'm, I'm, we all have a blind spot. I, I just can't see how this thing fits together. And so one of the things of the Christian, he's got the Holy Spirit, he's got the scriptures, and he's got friends to help him and, and help her. God expects me to give thought to my ways. He wants me to give thought to my ways. How have you parented, Nick? How have you been with Cutty in the last year, the last five years, in the last five months? Give thought to your ways. Are you a little bit distant? Have you, have you smothered her? Give thought to your ways. Are you self-aware? Are you praying for me? <laughs> what happened here? I'm a leader. That's me. Megan works in the office. Kati kind of works in the office. <laughs> Give thought to your ways. What, what's happening in your life? God expects us to think about our ways. Um, <clears throat> my ways, not the ways of others. We sit and sometimes I think, you know, you can't believe this person. Da, 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 da. You're giving thought to their ways. Okay. Did you notice that what happened? <laughs> But he says, give thought, not to their ways, give thought to your ways. And so that's, that's good because we are fantastic at judging others. We are fantastic at seeing, can't believe that nation, how they live, you know. Can't believe this church, can't believe this person in the life group. Um, sometimes we're deceived. You know, I hear people say, I really gave them a piece of my mind. Uh, really? You know, some of you think, you know, maybe you should give yourself a piece of your mind. Or didn't we have a wonderful evening? It's such a wonderful evening. No, you just, I just spoke the whole night. It was all about me and my stories. And I felt wonderful. Everyone just wilted. And then flip, that was a horrible evening. Give thought. Did you notice that? I mean, just to be honest, no one here, but sometimes Katya and I thought, gee, that was a really difficult dinner. And we get the phone call. We had a wonderful night. You know, you've got, you know. And I hope, I'm sure we've done it. We, all we spoke about was us and our kids and our story. Hope you didn't, but and it was wonderful for us, but terrible for them. Give thought to your ways. So, um, developing self awareness will not necessarily change your life or your behavior, but it'll give you an opportunity. So, so you say, okay, now that I know, that gives you. Oh, I notice that actually I'm overbearing, or I notice that I'm very, very backfooted. I'm like closed, like I'm just like a clam, I'm clammed up, and everyone thinks, are they okay? And so self-awareness then gives you, I, I can see it, then the next step is, is there something that you'd like me to change, Lord? Kati, can you help me? Nick, can you help me? Elders, can you help me? There's, I'm actually not doing so well. I've noticed something, and I don't quite know how to get, so there's an opportunity for transformation, opportunity for cha change. Most of the world passes through life without ever taking the time to consider the reasons behind their action or the ability to overcome the repeated patterns. That's a quote I get. Most of the world passes through life without ever taking the time to consider the reasons behind their actions nor the ability to overcome the repeated patterns. We see it with our parents. Like, why, like, why can't you change that? I remember thinking, why can't my mom and dad change that? Of course, the same may apply to us. What's happened there? We may be aware of things that need to go or to change or that are unhelpful. That's good. That's the beginning. We may have blind spots, unaware of them. That's where we help each other. So when somebody comes to you, the kisses of a friend, the, kiss, the wounds of a friend versus the kisses of an enemy, I'll get to it later. It's helpful if we as a people, somebody can say, I want to chat to you about that. And we think, thank you. Or we can get super defensive. Self-awareness is a good thing. The first step towards change is self-awareness. I realize it. I see it. I realize that I gossip, that I'm insecure, that I'm overbearing, that I'm slightly manipulative, I'm slightly moody, or I'm super confident and I think I know everything. Whatever your thing is. And there's none of you like that in this room. <laughs> so I'm just talking to myself mainly. Here's a church that has zero self-awareness. Can I show you the church? You know the church, Dave? Which is it? Yes, that's the one. <laughs> they tragically deceived. Listen to these words. Revelations 3.17. You say, 
<laughs> I love this. It like pierces me. You know, it's amazing how you say, I'm rich. I have acquired wealth. And listen to this. And I and do not need a thing. This is what this church says. Because I know in my heart, if I'm top of the pops, if I've got a big bank, big bank balance, I don't realize in my heart, not with my mouth, but in my heart of hearts, I don't need a thing. I'm wealthy, bro. I'm the guy. Do you know how much I have? Do you know how big the church is? Do you know about whatever it is, whatever your deal is, you say, I'm rich, I've acquired wealth, and I do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, <laughs> you're pitiful, you are poor, you are blind, and you're naked. I mean, how's that? We prayed in the prayer meeting tonight, Lord, if you have a word to give to Red Point, over the next while, people came up at the prayer meeting and began to give words. Would you speak to us as a church? Remedy, I counsel. This is the Holy Spirit. This is, now here comes, I counsel you. So when you see counsel, you, you, and you put in the HS, Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the great counselor. I counsel you to buy. I want you to go and buy. In other words, what's going to happen now is going to cost you. Self-awareness and the dealing with stuff in our lives is costly, brothers and sisters. Yeah, I'm bothered, bro. Like, I can't believe that person said that to me. I couldn't be bothered. Like, I'm like, I'm over that. I'm stressed. You know, I've got to, I run a church. I've got a business or my bank. I want you to go and buy. It's a costly thing. From me. Gold refined in the fire. <laughs> you, 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 you've got bucks and you think you're the top of the pot, but you are so wretched, pitiful, naked, blind, and poor. I want you to go and buy, and I want you to, to, to inconvenience yourself. I want you to, it, to cost you uh, gold refined in the fire. There are 10 references, I think it is, to scriptures about refine. I looked at them this afternoon. What are those scriptures? What does it mean to be refined in the fire. 1 Peter 1.17 is your cross-reference so that you can become rich. Imagine, imagine saying to a, a, a billionaire today, you, 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 are, you are so poor. He's like, are you nuts, bro? You are so wretchedly, pitifully poor. You could even have a church that's amazing, that's the talk of the town, and the Spirit says, you're poor. You're actually naked, you're blind. You see, self-awareness is a scary thing, but it's the best thing that can happen to us. And, and I will try and develop it. You can finish the preacher or the sermon. So you can uh, cover your shameful nakedness. Everyone can see that you're naked, but you, but you see, when we're naked, the first thing we do is want to cover up. And so when he says you're naked, it means everyone can see, oh, that person's got, it's like kind of naked. You know, it's quite a graphic thing, isn't it? People can see, but sometimes we can't see. And sell what you put in your eyes so you can see, um, so that you can see. Because you can't see who you are. You can't see what's going on. Those whom I love, uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse 19, those whom I love I rebuke and I discipline. So be earnest and repent. <clears throat> One of the great quotes I heard of self awareness, which I'm still getting to, I'm trying to form a, a base. You know how many Christians are dysfunctional? How many Christians do weird things? How many Christians, I've got, I've got, not in this church, people that I know, I'm thinking, with unsaved husbands, and I'm thinking, I don't know what to say to you. I mean, if you keep on doing what you're doing, there's something, I mean, I, I, I think your husband's gonna run further and further from Jesus. Did, can you see what you're doing? For the, for the, you know, I'm thinking, please stop. Even I know that, you know, and I want them also to get saved. Yesterday I thought I was clever and I wanted to change the world. It's one of the quotes. Today I'm wise and I want to change myself. And, and I know as a young leader, I, all I could see was, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this business. Even when I came into Red Point, I wasn't thinking of who am I? I'm thinking, okay, what do we need to do, Lord? How are we going to do it? Who are the new leaders? What must we preach? It's all good. But part of the thing is, because there is some pain along the way. You do, I do hurt people. I may, with my gift, I need to be self-aware of the peril of a strong 
Am I alpha male? What, I mean, alpha male, type A? People say, I don't know what I am. I don't know all that stuff. I don't go into that, but I've got to be careful. What says, Nick, you carrying this by your anxiety and by your be self-aware, Holy Spirit, if I, I can build nothing. Only you can build. What's your sphere of self-awareness? Can you say amen to me? Are you, are you breathing? Are you there? Carl Jung. I know, I know. I don't, have you ever heard me quote Carl Jung? Good. He's an interesting man. He's an agnostic. He's, he's a philosopher with Freud and the guys. He's a big hitter and some guys like him. I'll, only, I'll, I'll give you a quote of his. I don't, Jesus is my man, okay? Is my savior, is my Lord. Not Carl Jung, but I'll quote him. People will do anything, no matter how absurd, to avoid facing their own souls. I mean, these are sharp guys. These are, these are men who are incredibly bright, but of course have rejected God, okay? The ego is fine until it has to face the shadow that's under the carpet. That's a very interesting statement. The ego is fine until it has to face the shadow under the carpet. And the word, and that's a huge statement because they, each word is dissected. You see, it's the ego. Sometimes it's my ego. We all have an ego, self-esteem and stuff, okay? So I want to recommend a TED Talk to you. Can I recommend a TED Talk? Elders, can I do that? I don't think he's a Christian, but it's The Power of Self-Awareness by William L. Sparks. It's a TED Talk. I just thought it was helpful. Sometimes we listen to Christians, but it's good. He may be a Christian. Well, certainly his mentor was a, the guy that challenged him profoundly and changed his life on self-awareness was his mentor who was a Christian, a professor. This guy lived his life. He, he got married. At 26, he was divorced. Because it's just like, eh. <laughs> Auntie doesn't fit in with my plans. And he meets this professor. I think of psychology or something. And this professor takes him on a journey which changes his life. He's now in the TED Talk. He must be about 50 or 60. And he speaks about one experience with a guy. He said, your papers des deserves an, an A. Your thesis deserves an A, but I'm going to give you an F in the hope, in the hope that I will win you and will lose the degree, but I'll win you because you are totally lost. Isn't, wasn't that good? Self-awareness is critical for the way we connect with others, okay? Because brothers and sisters, we're in the people game. And some of you are in, have got such a gift. You've got such a personable gift because you have a good self-awareness. You interact, you listen well, you, you engage well. People want to be with you because, because you get the stuff out the way that needs to get out the way and you put the stuff there that is so amazing. That's good self-awareness. I don't have it, but some of you have it and I couldn't name you, but I won't. But I, maybe I will over the next because you've got a, a great rapport, you've got a great ease and therefore people are drawn to you now, some of us, some people have to be prophets. Some of them have to be the Elijah that stands the mind, not looking for popularity or acceptance, but generally for my marriage, for my children, for my friendships. It's very helpful. It's critical for the way we connect with others, including those close to you. It helps us manage our emotions and our triggers. I'm triggered again. I can't believe this is happening. I had such an interesting call with a guy from a different province for me yesterday. Like I'm thinking, he shouldn't be talking to me. He should be talking to his elders, but he's giving me this whole story. I'm thinking, oh my word. This is like a chaotic situation. And I phoned his lead elder. I said, listen, bro, you need to get onto this guy. He needs help. It's almost like I gave him a hundred on a hundred for being honest. I thought, man, does he need help? It's just like there's a chaotic world because those close to him are just popping, popping, popping. Um, we taught to focus and to play to our strengths. Now, can I just comment on that? You have to play to your strengths. You have to be used where God has gifted you. We get that, but we live in a strength finder's culture. It's not the strength that, the strength can get you into trouble. If you take a guy like Donald Trump, I think he has zero self-awareness. I mean, it's just like, he just like, do you, you know, have you ever repented? Well, I haven't thought about that. I'm thinking, and you, you're a Christian. He says, 
He's got, he doesn't understand what's happening. Around, he doesn't understand who he is. And let's say his personality or my personality is a bit messed up. I'm aware that I'm actually very arrogant or I'm very presumptuous. Anyway, where was I going? I don't know why I got into Donald Trump. <laughs> Sorry, Donald Trump lovers. Triggers. Play to your strength. God will use you. He'll give you a gift. That can be a strength. Or you could be an incredibly good administrator. Those are strengths. But that's half the picture. And a lot of incredible men and women have played to their strengths. Played to their strengths. But there's another side that's caused the whole strength, the tower to go over. Look at some of the... You know a guy like Carl Lenz that's gone down? A guy like... um, Saddleback guy, no, the, the Bill Harbles. Do you know what a gifted man he is? But there's another side, self-awareness, that this thing was incredible. Everyone applauded. No one dared touch him. But there's a self-awareness. Something's wrong. Something's wrong with me. I remember him driving in a, in a Cadillac here once at, Hill, at City Hill. I thought, Lord, is this how we should live? Just a question I asked. And, and it was a case to live there, but... But I need to be self-aware so that this, the strength, can keep growing and the people can be blessed. But I also need that side. Knowing, knowing, know and face your shadows, your struggles, your weaknesses, and be aware of and address them. Page two. Barry, are you, are you smiling at me, Barry? I need a smile from you, Barry. Self-awareness can be scary. It can be discouraging, Okay. If we are left alone to sort out our shadows, we're very scary. So fix it, bro. I don't know how to fix it. Okay, perhaps I'm insecure, I'm defensive, I'm, I'm overbearing, I talk too much, I've always got to have the last word, um, I'm a victim, I'm always asking why. I don't, I don't know how to fix it. That's a scary thing. And therefore, we deny. If you, if you point things out and think, well, thank you, now what do I do? Eventually, I'll say, deny, deny, doesn't exist. What's my strength? Let me just go for it. B-U-G-G-E-R, the world. I'm going to get on with it. I don't care what people think. So many people live like that and become more and more isolated. Become richer, but maybe become more and more isolated. Maybe even have amazing ministries. Look at old Putin. He can't sit with people around him unless they... Ladies, but he would sit at this table all alone with all these generals and guys. They, they're the worst of saying he's isolating himself more and more. Um, you can do this if you know your sonship and your daughtership in Jesus. You can, you can face anything about yourself if you're secure in your sonship and daughtership. I'm a son. I find security in him. I'm not looking for this to make me a better person or even dealing with stuff, okay? I'm fully loved and I'm fully known. God knows me, man. He, God knew David. He knew what David was. God knows. He, he, he knows from the time he knit me together, I was wonderfully, he said, I know, I put this boy together. I know exactly what he's going to do. I know what his struggle is going to be. I know his failings. I know his heartaches. I know he's going to, Make a molehill into a mountain. He knows you. But because of that, because I'm secure that I'm his, even though I may mess things up, I'm his. I may fail in my finances. I may even fail in my marriage, but I'm his. That allows you to deal with issues of self-awareness. And from that place, love and security and the kiss of God, Lord, help me deal with it. I fall into you. I fall into you. I hate the stuff, some of the stuff in my life, perhaps. I'm, I'm not happy with it. I repeat it, but I'm not giving up. And I cry out to you, Lord, thank you for my gifts. And sometimes I, I, Kati is so kind and she says to me, You're a great husband, and you listen. Often I think, oh, I like, oh, but, but there. But I want, to, I want to fall back into my father, amen? Um, <clears throat> we, we've quoted this 2 Peter 1, 3. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. So in him, 
You know, you know, one of the things that has astounded me, even amongst my peers, and, and let me put myself in the middle of that pack, lest you think I'm speaking of myself as out of that, I'm, it scares me how we can lack self-awareness amongst my peers. Incredible gifts, incredible marriages, amazing gratitude, and, 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 but also, whew, it's gonna cost that, could cost could cost us. And I think leadership has to have, we don't just like, we can't be like Steve Jobs. Well, I don't care what everyone thinks. I'm Steve Jobs. Check, my, check the apple. But Steve Jobs lost his marriage. Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs is not a hero. He produced an unbelievable product. But actually, Steve Jobs was probably broken. Don't want that without this, amen. If God grants us that, I'd rather have this than that. How about you? His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. To live life, to be an engineer, to be a teacher, Renix to be a pastor, to be a nurse, Ruthie to be an administrator of buildings for life and godliness. His divine power has given. Therefore, okay, Lord, let's do business. Come on, come on, keep going. Why did Jesus rebuke Peter so strongly? I think his spectacular lack of self-awareness. Can I just look at Matthew 26? Just, we know the story, but just, just look at it. And I think it, it was, he, he's an interesting guy and he gets picked on a lot, as you know. Matthew 26, 31. Um, if I can get there, 26. So there's just been the last supper. He's washed their feet. He's loved them. He's blessed them. Verse 31, then Jesus told them, this very night you will all fall away on accounts of me, okay? Listen, listen, Peter, listen. Listen to what the master's saying. You will all fall away on accounts of me, comma, for it is written. This is now Jesus quoting um, immutable scripture. Can I use the yeah, immutable scripture? Jesus is quoting scripture. I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered, what does that mean, Jesus? What does that mean? Well, will I fall away? You will fall away. Because the scripture says, if I strike the sheep, the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. What does that mean? Not Peter. <laughs> but after I have risen, he says, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Here's Peter, verse 33. Even if all fall away, you don't know me, Lord. Me, I'm special. No, no, you didn't listen, Peter. Listen to what I'm saying. You're all going to fall away. That means you. But if all fall away, Peter said, even if all fall away, on account of you, I never will. I tell you the truth, Jesus answered, this very night, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. So Jesus, I mean, puts his metal to the Pedal to the metal. He, he gives them as hard as he can. Force 10, you know, Gail. You'll disown me three times, Pete. No, 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 no. You don't know me. <laughs> Jesus, Mr. Jesus, me, I'm a special guy. But Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. Not me. Complete lack of self-awareness. What he needed is saying, um, maybe I will fall away. Maybe I'm not the man I thought I was. Maybe I will also, in that moment, because it has been written that we will all fall away. So let me humble myself. Let me, no, no, I'm the kind of guy that, oh, I said, Jesus, excuse me. No, shh, shh. Just quietly, Nick, put your hand down. Nothing to say here. You, if you knew who you were, you would automatically raise your hand and say, objection, Jesus. Ah, I'm different. Lack of self-awareness. Do you have any questions? So helpful. I think it's, it's, it's good to know that. Lack of self-awareness keeps us from desiring change. Ah, oh, Lord, I desire change. It keeps us from repentance. It keeps us from confession. As one body person says to me, oh, will you only ever teach on, on moral issues? I said, yeah, I, I will. I'll talk about humility. 
and I'll talk about our need for Christ, and I'll talk about the fact that he must increase and I must decrease. Because I think too many of us can fall around the fact that I don't even know who I am. And so it causes us not to repent, not to confess. It keeps us. It causes us to struggle with our spouses and wrestle with those close to us, or even with our parents or our children. Um, with our friends, with our employers, with our employees, the pattern repeats, repeat, repeat. With our leaders, struggling with our leaders. Do you know how many people struggle with their leaders? No problem. Well, my dad didn't love me. No, no, drop it. You're carrying stuff from, you had an issue with your principal or your boss or your father. You're a new creation. Come into the church and say, Lord, I submit to my leaders. I'm not submitting to them. I am, but I'm actually submitting to you because you said I should. And the same applies to me, amen? And so David went through a period of complete insanity, folly, sin, and betrayal. Remember he did it. Remember David, this beautiful man. This, and, then, and then Nathan comes to him with a cryptic message. He said, you know, this, is, this is guy, he's, he's, he, a traveler came, he is rich, he had, he had a whole lot of things, he had plenty cattle. And, he, and, and, and so he, instead of taking one of his, he goes to the one guy who's got one ewe lamb. He's only got one. And this thing he would hold in his arms and, his, and he would love it and he would even put it in his bed, I think. And, but, but the rich man took that lamb and, 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 and slaughtered it for the traveler. That man must die. It's you, David. Oh, what? That, that happened in your life? You just covered it up? And the beautiful thing is, and then... And then God's, and he, and, he's, and he says, and he says, I have sinned against the Lord. And, the, and, and Nathan says to him, the Lord has forgiven your sin, but there will be, he will take your, that son, and there will be heartache in your home. And then you go to Psalm 51, and what does he say? Uh, let me just take some excerpts, that beautiful psalm. Because I'm trying, the reason I want to just stick there is because it, it gives us keys. You know, he says, have mercy on me, etc. He begins the story. Um, according to your unfailing love, ah, I, I know you love me, but I've messed up. I didn't know I could do something like that, etc. Uh, your compassion, blood on my transgressions, wash away my sin, for I know my transgression and my sin is always before me. Now I'm self-aware. Now suddenly I realize, whoa. But it took him to get so properly disciplined by God, you know. And um, <clears throat> against you have I sinned, etc., etc. You are proven right when you speak, not when I speak. But when I speak, when you speak. It is said of, you know, when you speak, Lord, when I speak, yeah, listen to what the Lord says. When you speak, justified when you judge, surely I was sinful at birth, et cetera, et cetera, at the time I was conceived. Here it comes. You desire truth in the inner parts, underline, underline. That's self-awareness. Lord, I run from situations. Conflict, I run. People running now from this church. Problem, difficulty, God places you in family. He places you in a marriage. He gives you children. He, he knits you into a community. Into that community, you must have heartache. You must have a wrestle. You must have disappointments. Amen? Because that's where he works on you. And you think, oh, you're so disappointed and you're so hurt. Well, do you know that you've hurt others? Do you know that you hurt people too? And we learn. And we learn to walk together. And then God says, I want you to forgive them. I'm not forgiving them. I'm getting the hell out of this. I'm out of here. I'm out of this marriage. I'm out of this company. I'm out of this country. We need South Africans now to pray and fight for South Africa. Amen. And if you go, it's okay. We're not going to fight you as long as you go with the gospel. As long as Peter Ackerman, like he's saying to me, you know, kids ministry is going good. I said, well, that's a plus, you know. But I can't run because I want you to search me. I want you to know me. What else does he say? Teach me wisdom in the innermost place. Cleanse me with hyssop. Psalm 26, verse 2. Is this? Okay. Help me, Lord. Help me. Help me, God. The gospel must go. Um, Psalm 26, verse 2. Test me, O Lord. Imagine saying that. I, I, I haven't prayed that prayer yet. I'm still a bit nervous. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Yo. Examine my heart and my mind. I mean, there's four things there. Underline, underline. For your, for your love is ever before me. Do this to me because your love is there. I know you love me, but I see that I need testing and I need trying and I need examining. I need you to examine 
my, th- my mind, what my thinking, where do you get that thought from? Am I, examine my emotions. Why am I so emotional? Why do I feel so much pain about this thing? Why am I so happy when, I, when, when people praise me? Why am I so devastated? Why, Lord, examine me, try me, test me, know me. My brain, my thinking, the seed of my world, plus all these things that are popping inside of me. <laughs> Self-awareness. Psalm 139, verse 23. Search me. Now, when you say the Lord search me, he puts on the bright lights of heaven. You know those super bright torches? I've got one. It's like so bright. You know, our world's normally in darkness in our home. It's kind of a dark house. And even all the lights on. Then you get this torch. Man, and I put my glasses on. It's just like, whoa. Like, Mites and creepy crawlies and cracks and dust. And I think, whoa, that's like a proper torch. <laughs> Search me and know my heart because no, know, know my heart, God. Tell me what's happening. Make me aware. Know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me. I did a whole study on the word offensive. Yo, it was a mission to try and get what it actually means, okay? What offensive way in me means. And lead me in the way everlasting. That's David. Offensive way means, do I dishonor you in any way, God? Is there anything that's like ugly? Yeah, yeah, yes. Nick, thank you for asking. It only took you 40 years, but I wanna, wanna, you see that? Yeah, but but Jesus, I mean, Lord, my dad was like that and my brothers are like, shh, shh, shh. Do Do you see it? I'm going to help you walk out of it. Or at least identify it. You see, sometimes we think it's there, but I know how to mitigate against it. Can I say that? I know that thing must just sit down now because it's about to rear its head. It doesn't seem to go away, but I'm aware. I'm aware that now with Cutty, a reaction can come. And, and I think, no, 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 that's not going to come. I'm aware. It wants to come. Say, shh, sit down. So, but sometimes it may be completely eradicated. Um, Psalm 43 verse 3 These, this, this is a huge subject guys and you can, you can finish the preach Psalm 43 verse 3 send forth your light and your truth let them guide me I love that picture send it forth Lord where are you sending forth oh no it's good there send forth your light and your truth let them guide me Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Sorry, sorry. Let them guide me. Let them bring me to your holy mountain. To the place where you dwell. So, so isn't that incredible? Send forth your light and your truth. Let that guide me. Okay, Lord, I'm, I'm drifting, I'm drifting. Yeah, that guide me and bring me to your holy mountain and then to the place where you dwell, your very habitation. I like it, guys. I like it. You know, we, you know who's going to finish this race? Us oldies. It's the guys that, that humble themselves. It's the guys that are tender before God. It is the Dallas Willards that we started getting a bit nervous of because it was so introspective. They would repent three times a day. Beautiful man. He taught us something. Saying, Lord, uh, I can't even pray I'm so tender. I've got nothing to say to you, Lord. I'm just humbled. I want to see my friend Bobby yesterday. He's had an operation. Another mess, yeah. His shoulder big last night. I said, how are you, Bobby? He said, yeah, they, they didn't get all of it out. They could take it too. It's gone too deep. So I thought, okay, Lord, speak to me about this man. What are you doing with him? I just looked at him. I thought, okay, the battle's on. The battle's on. We're going to have to fight the cancer battle. There's radiation it doesn't, it's, it grows, but it doesn't spread, I think, basal cell carcinomas. But I'm thinking, okay, I want to walk with this man and stand with him. Teach me, God. I'm in standing in the hospital. There's Luke. Lord, what's happening here? Not what I think. I'm going to pray of the big prayer. Lord, what are you doing? Who are you? What's happening? Teach me your ways. Bring me to your holy mountain. Bring me to your dwelling. I want to be tender before God, brothers and sisters. Minister powerfully. Uh, effectively, let's let's do what we have to do. 
Let's preach a sermon. Chris Francois, incredible sermons, preaching on Genesis, hitting it. Let's go to Lesotho, hang doors. Let's do what we have to do. Let's do life group. Let's, let's Gunter and the guys went to Lesotho this weekend, <laughs> freezing cold. Let's do what we have to do with a plum. But let's also say, hmm, ah, Lord, I'm, I'm your servant. I must decrease and you must increase. Um, watch your life and your doctrine closely. We've made on the doctrine and your life. And so examine yourselves to see if you're in the faith. It's okay. It's not introspection. It's just, Lord, who am I? Why am I sad, God? Or are you sad because there weren't enough people at church? Nick, enough of that now. Enough of that. Come on, grow out of that. I'm your security, not the people. I will build the church. You know what I'm saying? The purpose of a man, Proverbs 20, verse 5, the purpose of a man's heart are deep waters. I love this. And I read this again. Proverbs. That's why I love to read Proverbs. The purpose of a man's heart are deep waters. It's too deep. I'm like, oh, it's so complicated. Our souls, you know, where do I come from? Who am I? But a man of understanding draws them out. The reason that I'm struggling with early attachment, um, you know, the family of origin issues, I do struggle. I want to go public with that. I'm not into, I'm, I'm not into going back into my Hardy and Dale family and Robert and Ray family because my kids carry Hardy and all that. But when we came to Christ, I'm a new creation. Yes, I may see alcoholism or I don't know what, or what insecurity or whatever it is, or inability to work with others or pride or, or, or elitism. I may see all that, but I, I, I will not, the devil will not paint me with that. I see it. I may see it, but there's a lot of things I don't see because I'm a new creation in Christ. But it also says the purpose of a man's heart are deep waters. And some of you, beloved here, don't have the struggle of complexity. Some of you are so easy. Life's simple. Like Ian. <laughs> Every time I see Ian, he's front-footed, he's top of the pops, he's, got a, he's, he's saying, praise God, praise God. Some of us are, oh, no. I'm somewhere in between. <laughs> But they are deep waters, some of us deeper than others, some more complex. If you look at your children, you think, that kid's so easy, free, fresh, the other one, oh, my hat is always a drama. There's our story behind the other story, which is behind the story, and that's the, it's okay. We love them both. But the purpose of a man's heart are deep waters, but a man of understanding draws them out. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for showing me. Thank you for showing me that I've always got to have the last word. Thank you for showing me that I'm, I bully my wife. Thank you for showing me that I drive. Give me another one. Somebody help me. Give me one of yours, Merv. <laughs> Thank you for showing me that I'm just a worry. I'm just a bag of worries. Thank you for showing me that if, I, you're all cool. Thank you for showing me that I don't need to find acceptance in man. You know, people struggle with leaders. Leader doesn't read me, doesn't see me, doesn't recognize me, doesn't greet me. That's rubbish. In fact, God orchestrates that in some mysterious way that eventually we will say, Jesus is my Savior. It's not who greets me, it's who do I greet? Who do I love? Who do I see? That's the church. That's why the church is a ticking time bomb. It's a ticking time because people come. I don't think you can walk long term with Jesus if you're broken. Sorry, let me rephrase it. I don't think you can walk long term with Jesus if you stay broken. Because eventually the pressure will build and something will happen where you'll eventually say, I can't do this anymore. But you can walk to the end of your days if you say, no, I know who I am. <laughs> I know my strengths and weaknesses. I know I've got to be a bit careful there. I'm vulnerable there, but it's okay. And I'm not going to blame Mervyn and Ruth. I'm just going to say, Lord, I know who I am. All a man's ways seem right to him, come to a close, but the Lord weighs the heart. I love that again. That, Lord, I'm sure I did right. Um, yeah, but your heart, you had a motive there. Do you know that you used somebody? Do you know that you used Francois and Ingrid? I realize it. I, you can use somebody. The Lord weighs the heart. Okay? It seems right to me. So those are, those are the fine nuances, amen? Are we going to get it perfect? No. But we're going we're gonna to roll together, amen? 
We're going to say, gee, now that guy's on the surgery table. God's got him dealing with them, showing him stuff. That other brother, that sister, they top of the pops, praise God. It's okay to be in different wards of the hospital, even though, Judy, we're a battleship. I like that. Judy's, where's Judy? Not here. She says, we've got, there you are, Judy. We are a battleship. She's been saying it for a long time, eh, Judy? You want to know what a battleship is? I want to make this a cruise liner, Judy. I want to be happy with a little hospital and some slip and slides and some suntan lotion and a swimming pool and some good food and everybody's happy. <laughs> Can we get some water for me? Yes. No, my cup is empty. No, don't worry, Megs. No, Cutty's got it. Thank you. Oh, I, I mean, the dream of a pastor is to have a cruise liner with those things that the sea doesn't rock us. You know those those ballasts, you know those things. You know those pool tables and the thing where you can play snooker and as the sea moves, the snooker table self writes. <laughs> Jeff, you know about that, eh? Have you got that in your gondola? <laughs> <laughs> Battleship, oh my hat. Camouflage. Always got some drone waiting to take you out. Always something going on. Trying to, there's, you know, there's, there's tension sometimes. Battleship. Interesting word. Thank you, Judy. <clears throat> For you created my innermost being. You made me God. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I know we just have, we're a couple of particles that collided and we arrived. How bizarre. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, which is this work. This, this work, your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. The reason I'm reading it, because I know you all know it, because when you do um, something of just self-awareness, this is before you. God loves me, man. I'm going to tweak some things in my life. You know, we, we, we went away as elders and we spent two days going through our names, our strengths and our weaknesses and what everyone said about that. It was a long time. So each elder had to say what he was strength was and what his weaknesses were. And then every other elder could say, okay, we're going to tell you what we think your strengths and weaknesses are. <laughs> I got pages. I, I made notes of every guy. I still got it. And every strength and every weakness. I better stop there. <laughs> were we able to change? I don't know. But it's written. So, so I, I want to say this. Let me say this for that exercise that I hear. But I wasn't one of them, eh? And I, was, I, was, I want to hear what my brothers and sisters say. I said, Lord, help me. I was fearfully, wonderfully made, knit together, woven together. I'm secure with that. I don't have to worry about what everyone thinks of me, but I, I, want, I want to do some business. Your blood of them. Come to me if you're burdened and, lay, and heavy laden. I'll give you a rest. Come to me. That's a beautiful thing, isn't it? How? You have to fill in the gaps. You still don't know that I'm God. You still don't know that I'm God. I, I share the story that I shared. I, I used to encourage the elders. I haven't done it for a while to go away. And I did it. And I, and I went away and I went away. And eventually, Rob Kuruva, I said, I said, Rob, go away and, and, and sit for like four hours. Don't, don't do anything. Don't speak. Don't just sit, you know. And... Um, uh, he, he went and, and uh, after the third hour, he, he said this, this is ridiculous. I cannot do this. I'm wasting my time. I think from memory this, he went another hour and suddenly just sat Leisure Bay at the Andre Vets Cottage and he just sat there. And after X number of hours, everything just poof, came alive. He took out a pen from memory and a full scap pad and he wrote from memory, a whole book out. God spoke to him about himself and the, and the joy and the journey and the call. Be still. I am God. I, I, I can take you on a journey. I can deliver you and I can use you. You know, brothers, we greet Jesus as trophies. Peter ended up beautifully. Peter's theology was profound, Amen. He let God do a work in him. How do I close? Don't be self-conscious. 
Self-conscious, what do you mean? No, it's self-aware, okay? It's a subtle word. If you go to the sea, you'll see, oh, there's a riptide there. Where is it? Aware means you can see things that very few people see. Can you see that? I can't see it. Where is it? But you see that there, that, how did you see that? Perceptive, I'm aware. I've got ears to hear. Lord, speak. Not so much why am I like I'm closing. You see, the, the one lady spoke at length about it's not the it's not the why Lord, why Lord, why Lord am I like this? The why question is not you, you're gonna get into trouble. Why do I behave like this? Why does the sin so easily beset me? Why did I lose my spouse? Why they say the experts, the secular experts say, why will will will, will entrap you? What will release you? What do you want me to do, Lord? I want you to stop being lonely and I want you to go on mission. I want you to never to criticize your spouse or your leaders again. Every time it pops out, lose it. What, what, it's the what. How, how, how am I gonna get to the other side? Not why, why I just says, why, Lord? But it's the, what do you want me to do? Maybe how do you want me to do this? Okay, that's, that's just throwing that out at you. A greater self-awareness leads to a greater God awareness and a greater God awareness leads to, leads to a greater self-awareness, okay? Finished. With this. <laughs> Mikey, I saw you nodding, eh? There's a picture of a prayer meeting tonight in, in Portugal with the one brother. He's gone. Okay, true self-awareness, I'm, I'm, this is three last points. True self-awareness hurts and it disturbs and it disrupts. Don't be scared of it. True self-awareness when you're like, oh my word, don't deny it. It, it, it. it can disturb and disrupt and hurt. We prefer the shallow waters of back me, man, encourage me. I don't need that, I need your encouragement. I don't, we prefer that. It's, we may need that other one. We have a moral obligation to give developmental feedback. Can I repeat that? I have a moral obligation to my brother Francois because we spend a lot of time together. We, we pray together, we're in the office together, we talk about church. I have a moral obligation to give him, what is, what's the thing? Developmental feedback. And it might hurt him. You think, oh, I enjoy that. Limp out of here, go all the way down to the practice that it actually says, thank you, Lord, or vice versa, amen? We have a moral obligation, that's a secular word, to give divine feedback to others. Lastly, personal transformation happens when we have the courage to face our shadows. I mean, it's okay, guys, we all, we all got some brokenness, it's okay. We all make some little oopsies. As, as this one lady keeps on saying, every time we see her, she says, I just want you to know I'm not the person you think I am. I just want to, some of you think I'm this amazing person. I'm not the person you think I am. I'm a very ordinary person. She, she says it again and again. And I think, thank you. Isn't that good? The shadow is rather what you yourself perceive as dark and weak about yourself and therefore needs to be hidden and denied. It doesn't. We all, we all need to be self aware. Any questions? We've got two minutes. Jeff and I can see you. You've got a question bursting. Any, are there any questions? Is there anything that you have made you more confused then? It's quite a simple concept, if you get it, generally. Go on a journey. And we'll never, ever condemn or fight you if you are stuck, ever, ever, ever. Even if you are stuck with a thing where you just got blind, we're not, we're not here to say, fix it. We're not Pharisees saying, together. Thank you for being so gracious. Thank you for being self aware, leaders of Red Point. I mean that. I mean that. I'm not just saying that. When I walk into church on Sunday, it's very solemn that you get completely overwhelmed by people. It just, 
oh, maybe some visitors or, but generally this team is you're self-effacing, you're aware, you're perceptive of what's happening around you. You are, um, help me cut, you're sensitive and you're very caring. Francis, please come pray. Let me ask Ingrid. Ingrid, come pray for us. Okay. So, Father, I just want to thank you for just who you are. So as I've been sitting here listening, just so aware of your, I just feel like you've been like a father here talking to us, just talking to me and, um, I don't know, just drawing me um, closer to yourself and putting in me such a longing to be just clean and pure and available and delightful to you and um, just fruitful in your service. So I pray to help each one of us to take this word and to sit with these scriptures that Nick has brought to us and um, to allow your light to shine into us, just into our thoughts and into our motives and into our um, hearts, um, into our dreams, just into all we are, and that we would trust you enough to do that, and that we would um, just be sober-minded and you know, just allow you to come and clean us and wash us and transform us and open our eyes, that we see the things that would be um, dangerous to, um, to us going forward, that we'd be able to see the blind spots that are within us. Um, help us, Lord Jesus, to to just to trust you in this process and to be open to your dealings within us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just even as Nick's been speaking, that everything you do is because you love us and because you want us to be more and more like our precious Jesus. And you want us to be walking in closer fellowship with you and with one another. So just thank you that you call us into deep waters together with you. Um, thank you that you're so real and honest and open and truthful. And um, we just want to say that we love you. We're so in awe of you. We so are um, in awe of the fact that we can walk this walk that we walk together with the Holy Spirit as our companion and our counselor and our friend. Um, help us, Lord Jesus, just as a community to love one another deeply and um, to um, even have the courage to open ourselves up to one another and, and even to be able to speak a word that in love to others that would be f freeing and releasing to, to others as well. Just thank you, Lord. Watch over us as we go from this place. Just watch over us in this weekend as we fast through this word and into the weeks to come. Do just do, be, do something beautiful in us. And I pray, Lord, that you'd bless Nick for his time of preparation and for bringing us the word this evening that we can eat a, a very meaty meal. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Maybe just to close, but often these things, they happen slowly. And uh, over, I'm just thinking of the holidays coming up. Some of us have school holidays, a little bit more time, maybe going away. What we can do is we'll try and put next notes onto the deacons group. And you can just go through them. Often these scriptures you need to read through again and again and again. So we'll just put on the deacons group for anyone who may want to spend some time on it. Amen. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Nick, for the ministry. Very good. Thank you, guys.